so you bought, you found milkweed to plant uh, there at your house. Where did you find it? Do you know where people can find milkweed? It grows wild in fields. And a lot of times if you're uh, driving and you see feel like grassy fields because it loves sunlight, you'll see these tall plants just popping up in the middle of fields. It's a very tall plant. It has big leaves on it. It's got a big pod it gets on the top. I'll post some pictures again on, on that Facebook group, the, the butterfly lady. <laughs> um, I'll post some pictures of it, yeah. Um, it gets a beautiful pink and white flower, little tiny flowers like on a long you know, stem of them. Um, and then when the flowers go away, it gets these huge pods on the plant. Um, in the fall, the pods break open and open up and they almost look like the little money stealers, you know, the little feathery things that kind of float through the air. Oh. And that's milkweed. Um, I did find it also growing, like I said, because of there's such an awareness of how important the monarchs are and how they are becoming extinct, you know, if we don't do something about it. Um, my nursery started carrying milkweed. And it wasn't expensive. I think it was like $10 a pot for a huge pot of tall milkweed. That's what I ended up buying and putting the plants inside the habitat because it was getting too hard to just keep going out and picking it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and if nothing else, you can get packets of seeds. They sell milkweed seeds wherever you see flower seeds. Perfect. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. You know, I was looking because, um, when you first started telling me about how you were doing this, I started trying to see like, does this happen in California, you know? And, and yeah. it looks like the monarch populations, um, the, the, the biggest monarch population, I guess, is, is here in North America. And so it said there's Eastern monarchs and there's Western monarchs. And so pretty much wherever you live in North America, you can, um, you can make a difference. So like the Eastern ones, they do the migration you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the Western ones, I guess the ones we have here in California migrate towards the coast and then inland and towards the coast oh, and then okay, inland um, versus like North and South. Well, maybe North, maybe a little North and South, but within like the state, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I also read that they do have populations now in like Spain, Portugal, New Zealand, Australia. So I think a lot of people who are listening um, if they start Googling about like their local um, monarch population can probably do what we're talking about to yeah. help. So. Yeah. It's also important too to grow milkweed that's native to your area too, because that's what the butterflies look for. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I read that, that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I read that too. So like you said, going to your local nursery is probably the best first step, mm -hmm. you know, to, or, or if you can find it growing wild. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like you said, if you find it growing wild, you might be um, forever in the process of running back out to get more, get more, I was, get more. I was, because it dies and they only want fresh <laughs> caterpillars need fresh milkweeds so as I started to start to fade it fades fast like about two days every two days I was running out to get plants um, it was funny because so many um, so many of you know my neighbors and then through work people were like you paid for milkweed <laughs> it grows everywhere but I didn't even know what to look for or what it looked like you know uh -huh. yeah so um, also this year I've been looking at flowers you know in uh, specific the butterflies really love blue flowers I found out um, I would always think like red or yellow but um, so in my garden I'm gonna make sure I want to have a pollination garden so I'm looking into plants that I can put in that'll help draw more butterflies and bees in um, this year was something I didn't think about last year you know to help with the vegetables and with this whole uh, other thing I'm getting into now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think that. What is that? I love it. I, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, you've, you've mentioned the Facebook group that you started a couple of times. And I, I love that you're doing this because I think, like, for me personally, I want to do this with my kids, but it's kind of like, oh, we just, I, I, I don't necessarily want to, like, Google and try to find everything and, and I'm open to it, but I just know that I personally will not pull off Googling and figuring it out all on my own. And so I'm really excited that you're, you're doing this because I think, um, having like a little community of people to, to do this with, I think is, mm -hmm. is going to be really exciting. Um, it's so great. And you know, it doesn't really have to cost a lot of money. 
I mean, if, if, if the only thing you can do is put a few milkweed seeds in there or go out to the field, you know, when the pods form, bring those pods home, let them dry out and then sprinkle the seeds everywhere. Um, that would be great. You know, if you don't mm -hmm. want to go through all this, but like I said, little habitats are really inexpensive, um, to get, you know, if you want to do that, collecting the milkweed doesn't cost any money. If you want to do that, you know, um, you could probably even make your own. I just, I like the idea of the netted habitats because like I said, it does keep wasps and other little creatures out of there that might eat them before they have a fighting chance, you know? Mm -hmm. I can um, see how you, you would pretty quickly get attached, you know, it's like just listening to your story, it's kind of like you go through planting the milkweed and getting so excited, you see the little caterpillars, what? you realize what they are, and then it's like, what? <laughs> like they're gone. So I, fast. Know, I felt like so stupid. I'm like, oh, great. Now these caterpillars are going to eat these plants and the butterflies can't even come. Not even thinking that she laid the egg so fast, you know, that that happened on these tiny little baby plants, mm. you know? Mm. Um, two things too we're, we're you know just to keep in mind too one of the butterflies that came out um had something wrong with its wing and you know right away all my butterflies had a name i named them all when they were born i felt everything everybody deserves a name you know you can even there are um places and you can google tagging butterflies they actually sell tags for your butterflies they're like tiny tiny little tiny circle things where you can actually track the migration of your butterfly if you want to you know you would just tack this little uh sticky thing mm -hmm. on the wing i haven't i i don't want to do that because i don't want to know if they make it or not i'm just hoping <laughs> in my <laughs> mind they're all making it yeah making yeah it. yeah but i had um one of the butterflies that emerged really late like in september um you know where i am in upstate new york it was cool at night we would, we would get starting to get a lot of rain and i knew they needed warmer temperatures to start this whole migration thing and I was really worried about him and um, um, for whatever reason when he emerged his one wig didn't fully dry the right way and um, it almost looked detached um, in one spot and it kind of curled around the wing and so I'm like oh what am I going to do so I'm googling how do you fix a butterfly's wing I mean you can actually there are videos on you know if you find a butterfly that has a wing torn or something you can patch them in and glue them to their wings and everything and repair them. I haven't gotten into any of that yet, but, um, and so this one little butterfly, I was like, Oh, what am I going to do? You know? And then I saw videos on the kindest thing to do. You could do two things. You could put it out in your garden because some butterflies aren't meant to get all the way to Mexico. Some butterflies are meant to be food for other species. You know, there are some birds that actually, uh, don't like the taste of monarchs and that's how they teach their young not to eat any monarchs because they will kill a monarch to show them that this tastes bad mm, interesting I, I realize nature has nature's cruel sometimes <laughs> and uh, you know not every monarch's made to get all the way down to mexico mm. and i accept that so i'm like okay if nothing else they say you can put them in the freezer which basically puts them to sleep okay you know, they, they die in the end if they're maimed and they can't fly anymore Okay. Or put them out in your garden and just let them be a butterfly, basically, for as long as they can be a butterfly. Even though they can't fly, they'll crawl around in the plants and, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was, like, so upset over this guy. I'm like, no. He had faith. You know, he went into this whole transformation, totally, you know, turned himself into something different. I had <laughs> this butterfly a chance. So he's actually the little butterfly that you'll see eating out of the, um, the bottle cap because... Um, after he emerged and he already had, you know, this wing going against him, um, it rained for like two days here. So I Googled, what do butterflies eat? You know, what do you do if you can't release a butterfly? And um, what I found out is, you know, it's cruel just to keep them in the habitat because their whole um, thinking, all their brain thinks about is flying, is getting out and flying. And that's all he was doing. He was just walking all over the place to try to you know figure out how to fly um so you can take a little sugar and water and make like a little nectar and i put it in a bottle cap and i held him like i said before and you saw his little proboscis mm -hmm. they call it, a little straw come out he was drinking so i figured okay i'm gonna get this little guy as strong as he can and then um as soon as the sun came out the next day i had this little guy he was a boy he was a male we named him winston and um 
I had him on uh, my hand and I swear you will see in the video. I didn't post this one. I could post this. One. He actually like looked back at me before he took off. Like almost like I'm taking it as like, thank you. <laughs> and he flew, he flew up over my trees and I didn't see, you know, how far he went after that. Um, but I'm like, my gosh, here's this little butterfly that, you know, everything I read, everything I saw was any butterfly that if they have one torn wing, if their wings aren't exactly the same, they can't fly. You know, both their wings have to be the same balance. But he flew. So, you know, maybe he won't get to Mexico, but I just felt like at least he had a fighting chance to be a butterfly and fly, you know, and experience that flight. I, I tell you, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. One proud mama when he like flew over the trees, and, like you go, you know, everybody was saying you weren't going to be able to fly, but he did. Yeah, he flew. Oh, so I don't know if it was the sugar water that gave him the extra strength. You know, he ate for two days um, and he had the warm sun, you know, for his uh, first flight there. Mm. Um, I really do attach to them. They really, you know, it's, it's really fascinating. Your kids will love it. If you have little kids, you know, they would really love it. Thank you.